Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. The human body is a wonderful thing. What's especially great about it is how universal it is. Most able-bodied people from around the world have the exact same anatomy, regardless of where they are from in the world and regardless of their life background. As we all have a body and a clear understanding of how it works, it makes an awful lot of sense that parts of the world are named after parts of the body. This might sound quite strange at first, and trust me, a lot of them are, but some are actually rather logical. Many naturally occurring geographic features are reminiscent of the human form, so in turn get named after them. Some of these however are little more than a coincidence, where old words we now link with the body were used in a different light. So today, let's look into parts of the world that were named after parts of the body, though I need to stress that these are just in the English speaking world. I imagine there are way more out there and please let me know of them down below. Also some of the body parts places are named after that I'm covering here today might be seen as inappropriate to some of you, so apologies for that. Hopefully we are all in agreement however that heads are a non-controversial part of the body though, right? Our heads are perhaps one of the most important parts of our entire bodies. They home our faces which are a key way in which we differentiate people and our all-important brains are in our head too. It could be argued that pretty much everything that makes you you is located on or in your head. It only makes sense that somewhere will be named after heads, and the one I'm covering is in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan, that being the town of Indian Head. This is a small town with just shy of 2,000 residents. Obviously the Indian in this name doesn't refer to someone from the nation of India, but to Native Americans instead. There are 70 different First Nation tribes that call this territory their home, so we aren't sure which one this name may be referring to. Fittingly though, a key image in the town is a statue of a Native American's head. Despite the turbulent history of Native Americans and their heads in the Americas, this name luckily doesn't come from two gruesome origins. There are hills just south of this town, in which natives use as a burial ground. These burial grounds eventually got a native name, meaning Many Skeletons Hill, which was eventually changed to just Many Skulls Hill. The skulls buried in these hills belong to the heads of of Indians. So when settlers set up a nearby town, they named it after these hills, which they refer to as Indian Head. Though this is just one idea as to where the name comes from. A part of your face are your lips. These all important body parts help us digest food, can help us sense things, and we've culturally made them one of the most intimate parts of our body. One of the key ways in which we show our love for others is by touching our lips to their body. For people we really care for, we touch lips with them. This is called osculation, or more popularly known as kissing, I guess. I'm sure you can tell from my description of kissing that I'm not the most romantic person. Nevertheless, we have somewhere on our planet named after lips, that being Liphook. Liphook is another village, though this time here in England in the county of Hampshire. From what I can gather, Liphook seems like a pretty unassuming though pleasant English village. Its name however makes it stand out for us though. Unfortunately, despite how it sounds to us, the name Liphook has little to do with actual lips or actual hooks. The name seems to have been first recorded in the 14th century as Liophock, with this name meaning angle by the deer's leap, which is a rather odd meaning indeed. This angle isn't thought to reference the angle of a deer's leap, but rather a literal angle, aka a slope of a hill where deers leap, so the name pretty much means a sloping piece of land where deers leap around. Over the years however, this name transformed to take on its body part name as it has today. Lips are of course a part of our mouths, and mouth might quite possibly be the most reoccurring body part to crop up in place names. There are tons of settlements that have mouth at the end of their name. This is because we have applied the word mouth to the part of rivers that open up like mouths, so settlements in these river mouths have the word mouth in their name too. Take the likes of Plymouth or Portsmouth, which we have here in the UK and also in the US too. A great one however is Eye Mouth up in Scotland, which has two body parts parts of its name. This is because the river's mouth that this settlement is built on is called eye water. Eye apparently comes from an old English word for river. Ear. There's of course also Cockermouth in Cumbria in England too, which like Eyemouth too has two body parts in its name. This one comes from the river Cocker, which is thought to come from the old
old English word for crooked. It has nothing to do with what you and I associate with that word. Though despite this, the town's name has become somewhat infamous. I'm sure many people have stopped to have a giggle at it. Though maybe not quite as popular as mouths, elbows are a body part that crop up in a lot of place names too. There are settlements simply called Elbow in the USA, UK and Canada. There are also places with Elbow in their name as well as other words. Take the likes of Elbow Spring and Elbow Hollow both in Utah, as well as Devil's Elbow in Scotland. There is a key reason as to why so many places are named after Elbows. Our Elbows serve the very important purpose of not only connecting the two main parts of our arm, but also allowing them to bend. It's this bending action that perhaps most defines the elbow and is the reason why it has lent its name to so many parts of the world. Most places with elbow in their name feature or center around some sort of dramatic bend, whether that be a distinctive bend in a river or an incredibly bendy road. As I said, throughout history, we have seen our own anatomy in geographic features around us, and these natural bends in the landscape remind the ancient people of the bend in their own arms. Just bow unto itself is a word we still used to this day to refer to when something is starting to bend. I mentioned a couple of those elbow places were in the US state of Utah, and it seems that there's actually quite a few body parts inspired by place names in the state. Thankfully, Peter on the historic Utah website has written a post all about them. It's an interesting read, and thanks to it, this video could easily have just been places in Utah. Though if I had to call upon just one other body part this article sheds a light on, it would have to be nipples. Yep, there are quite a few places in Utah and across our globe on the whole named after nipples. These places named nipple are by and large mountains. While it might sound silly at first, it really makes all the sense in the world as mountains can and do look a lot like nipples at times. What's even stranger about this is that a lot of the nipple names in Utah are preceded by an actual human first name. There are seven mountains with the name of Molly's nipple in Utah alone. We don't seem to be too sure on who exactly this Molly is or why she had so many nipples though. One idea is simply because Molly is the diminution of Mary originally, and with Mary being such a common girl's name in the past, it meant Molly could have become a catch-all term for women in general, so these names might more likely mean things like woman's nipple than point to any particular Molly. While nipples are more linked with women, men do have them too, and this is seen with nipple place names too. Utah's also home to a mountain called Peter's nipple as well. It's not only our outsides which have inspired place names, there are places named after our organs too. At least they seem like it when we first notice these names. Most noticeably with the city of Liverpool here in the United Kingdom. The liver serves the purpose of regulating blood levels in our body and eliminates waste products from our body. Perhaps most noticeably, it helps with high levels of alcohol consumption. Liverpool is a city known for its culture and nightlife, which also includes high alcohol consumption. However, the liver in Liverpool has nothing to do with the alcoholic drinks being drunk in the city. This name dates all the way back to the 12th century and was originally spelt Leopool. This is a combination of the Old English liver, meaning thick slash muddy water, and pool, quite simply meaning a pool of water. So the name Liverpool means a pool of muddy water, which most likely is a reference to the River Mersey, which runs through the city, which can appear quite muddy at times. So while this name is kind of gross, it's not as gross as the idea of a pool filled with literal livers. Another organ that helps regulate what we put into our body is our pancreas. And there's a place in London that has a name that sounds pretty similar to the pancreas, that being St Pancras, which is a district of northern London, but the name is most heavily linked with one of London's biggest train stations. As you can see, pancreas and pancreas actually spelt differently. However, there is an etymological link between the two. St Pancras is named after Pancras of Rome, a Christian Roman martyr. His name is thought to mean one who holds everything, with the pan part of this name meaning everything slash all. The pan in pancreas means all too, with the latter half of its name meaning flesh, as the pancreas at first glance seems a little more than a huge lump made up entirely of flesh. So while the names might sound similar, the part of London isn't named after the organ, though there are links between the names so still worth clearing the air on this one. Perhaps the most important organ though is the heart, and there is somewhere that 
is seemingly named after this organ too, that being Hartford. As you may see there, the spelling isn't the same. Unsurprisingly, this name doesn't come from actual beating heart. Heart is an old name for deers, so the name Hartford means a ford for deers, with a ford being a crossing in a river. What's interesting though is that this name was brought over to the USA too with Hartford, Connecticut, which uses an A instead of an E. But that isn't the organ's correct spelling either, so never mind. Not all body part place names get to stay around forever, unfortunately. In the town of Conisborough in England is a street called Archer's Way. This street didn't always have this name, however, as prior to 2009, this street was called Butthole Road. A fantastic name that, while is incredibly funny, it seems the residents of Butthole Road grew tired of the jokes, people mooning for photos with the sign, and the post office not sending their mail as they thought it was a joke address. The residents of the street funded for a new sign and a name change for the road. How did this road end up with this original name to begin with, however? Well, while we aren't entirely sure as to how the name came about, the popular theory is that it comes from a communal water butt that the residents of the street would have shared water from in the past. While that water butt isn't there anymore, the name held out all the way until the 21st century. And once again, over in the USA, we have the Finger Lakes in the state of New York. If you're anything like me, Jim Carrey's weird office cameo will come to mind when you hear of these lakes. These lakes are long and thin, so you may think they're called the Finger Lakes due to their appearance. And while that may be a part of the reason why, there is some Native American mythology behind the name too. The legend claims that these lakes were formed by the Great Spirit, running their fingers over the land to bless it. Where their fingers traced, the land eventually got filled with water, hence why they are called the Finger Lakes, as they are believed to be made from the fingers of a divine being. So, whether it be a body part that is visible for the world to see, or a body part within us like organs, or a part society deems we cover up like nipples and butts, body parts have really inspired how we name parts of our planet. Places named after body parts were suggested by Christian Howells, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains patron saints of places named after body parts. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explain video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter where I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you all so much.